What if we could prevent an extinction level event, such as a massive asteroid hitting Earth? Well, thanks to NASA's first ever asteroid redirect mission, known as the Double Asteroid Redirect Test, or DART, we might just be able to do that. The DART Impactor was launched in November 2021. It was a low-cost spacecraft, <clears throat> not really, designed to test whether we could use kinetic energy to deflect an asteroid by slamming into it. In September 2022, DART successfully impacted its target, the asteroid minimoon Dimorphos. At over 14,000 miles per hour or 6.6 kilometers per second. Like a game of pool, DART was able to successfully alter Dimorphos' orbit around its larger companion asteroid, Didymus. Keeping in mind the asteroid is 163 meters across in size, which is bigger than the Great Pyramid of Giza. DART's success shows that we have the technology to potentially defect asteroids that could pose a threat to Earth. Of course, don't worry, this was just a test and the asteroid was just an innocent space rock out there minding its own business, until we decided to give it a little space nudge. So, we would simulate this unbelievable experiment in Kerbal Space Program in order to see if we could also bully, <coughs> uh, I mean uh, deflect an asteroid, and explain this achievement and what it means for Earth's defense. Our first goal is to build DART. This was basically a large refrigerator sized box with an advanced iron propulsion engine, autonomous smart navigation, and communication. Oh, and let's not forget the solar array. Hidden inside was also a CubeSat, which was basically a miniaturized satellite with a mass of just 14 kilograms. This would separate from DART 15 days prior, and much like paparazzi, it would capture the DART impact and the resulting ejector cloud with its camera. Then came the rocket that would take everything into space. This was SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. So we ignited the engines and commenced liftoff, with the rocket punching through the atmosphere. This was designed to take the payload and Falcon 9's second stage on an escape trajectory from Earth. After almost 9 minutes, the Falcon 9 second stage separated from the rocket, carrying the DART spacecraft onwards. The booster returned to Earth, falling through the atmosphere with its final goal of landing safely on a drone ship in the Pacific Ocean named Of Course I Still Love You. Or in our case, we attempted the landing, until inevitably we decided to go for a dip in the ocean to cool down. The DART spacecraft continued on its journey, where it ejected the fairings that were protecting the payload. Then, not too long after, we separated from the second stage. And with some difficulty, we ejected the covering for the ion engine. Over 10 months later of traveling through space, we had reached our target, the asteroid Dimorphos. As we approached our destination, it was time to eject the CubeSat. This was a bit of a problem and he had to do a bit of a spinny spinny to get it off the dart impactor, but it worked in the end. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the asteroid impact. In the pitch black of space, there was a bright flash of light. The spacecraft, weighing just 550 kilograms at the time of impact, produced kinetic energy comparable to the atomic bombs from World War II. The result, a massive impact crater and a large amount of ejector that subsequently altered Dimorphos' orbit by 32 minutes. A swarm of at least 37 boulders were discovered in images, each moving away from the asteroid at a relatively slow rate. The recoil from the ejector acted as a rocket engine, pushing the asteroid further, creating a significant momentum change, further amplifying the momentum change directly imparted by DART itself. DART's impact continues to serve as a valuable lesson for scientists, helping them refine their models and better equip us to face potentially hazardous asteroids. Today, we've successfully mapped most asteroids larger than 1000 meters in size, offering some peace of mind as there are currently no known asteroids threatening Earth. However, there's a concerning gap in our knowledge when it comes to those sneaky 140 meter sized cosmic rocks. Scarily, it just takes one of these asteroids to form a crater of 1 to 2 kilometers in size. 
This would devastate entire regions, unleashing chaos on Earth. Though, on a somewhat positive note, there is a 1% probability of one of these asteroid impacts occurring within any given 100 year period. It's like the universe's version of, <clears throat> are you feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> Let's hope our asteroid defense technology keeps improving, so we never have to know that answer. Overall, the threat is small, but nonetheless, it's something that we should be prepared for. NASA reminds us that the intercepting of an asteroid the size of a half a mile giant, like Amorphous, is possible with adequate warning time, ideally spanning several years to several decades. A big shout out to the Case We One community, especially the modders, for making it possible to bring the real life asteroids and the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket into the game. Links can be found in the description of the video if you're interested. But did you think we were finished? No, no way. <laughs> that was uh, a little bit unsatisfying because at the end of the day, we had sent a box to crash into an asteroid. Now, I understand, you know, it's meant for it to be a kinetic energy impactor, but you know, when you think of things like kinetic energy impactors, they tend to be sharp, pointy, shiny. Ah, oh, the curb would just sputter just then. That was an accident, but you know, I would have thought something more cooler looking would have been good, but hey, you know, we're just going to do all this in game then because, you know, NASA didn't do it. So actually, we're going to take it a step further and do what we're not meant to do, which is send a, a couple of nukes to crash into the asteroid. Because, you know, if you send a nuke to the asteroid, it could potentially split the asteroid into, you know, a bunch of pieces. And of course, if that goes to Earth, you would have an issue with uh, the nuclear fallout as well. So, or, or, you know, radiation. That's not a good thing really, but hey, for entertainment's sake, we had to do it in game. So, bit of like expanse style right here, seeing if we can do a cool little crash and... Uh, so those were three nukes and they failed and we did crash into one, but <laughs> we'll do it again. Uh, that, that didn't work so well. Here we go, in position, all right, lining ourselves up, checking the nukes, making sure they're actually going to work. Sometimes it doesn't work, I have no idea why. And if you look at the speed here, we're going fast, but if you compare it to the actual DART mission, where they traveled 6.6 kilometers per second, it's, it's, we're very far off. And here we go, eject one, and, oh yeah. That's what we wanted to see. <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's satisfying, NASA, don't you think? I mean, look, there's plenty of risks here, but you know, it looks nice. Okay, that's what. Ah, uh, wait a second. The asteroid is still there. 